Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, Stephen's going to be teaching you how to play Ave Maria. Now, off the bat, I've got to give big props to Stephen for writing an incredible arrangement on this tune, and I think my favorite thing is how he tastefully blended the harmony and the melody, but at the same time, he really makes the melody shine and pop and come through, and it's just... I, I loved it so much that I've actually been playing over this arrangement for the last couple of days. And I've got to say that first off, it's a ton of fun. But secondly, I think it's going to be perfect for the budding advanced player. In other words, if you're at that season intermediate level, this should be a really good challenge for you. Now let's take a step back. Let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, Stephen's going to teach you the first half of the tune, but if you want to learn the second half, he's going to be teaching that in the part two lesson, which is going to be available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for the song, and also on that page are the tabs that you can print off to follow along with, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Steven to teach you how to play this and then I'll catch you at the end of the video. Hi everyone, and welcome to this lesson on Ave Maria by Franz Schubert. Now I'm sure you'll agree, this is just an absolutely beautiful piece of music. Um, it's long been one of my personal favorites. I think it sounds amazing on the ukulele. Before we get stuck into learning it though, I just wanna go over a couple of things about this arrangement. So the first thing to mention is that we're in six eight time, which just means that we have six eighth notes per measure, which will count in two groups of three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And notes as well there, put a slight accent on beats one and four. That just gives us this kind of lovely waltz feel. So for the most part, this arrangement is fairly straightforward rhythmically, and we're mostly just playing this continuous eighth note rhythm of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now there are some trickier measures where that rhythm changes slightly, but we'll look at those in more detail. When we get to them, they'll be fine. So the next thing to mention is that this is quite a kind of intricate finger style piece um, all the way through. So I definitely recommend using the Pima right hand picking approach when learning this one. So the letters Pima just come from the Spanish words for our fingers. So the thumb is pulgar, the index finger is indice, middle finger is medio, and the ring finger is anula. Um, so the thumb takes the G string, the index finger takes the C string, middle finger takes the E string, and then the ring finger takes the A string. And if you keep to that kind of picking pattern, it'll just make this piece a lot easier to master. So the final thing to mention is that this arrangement is for high G. So make sure you've got your high G ukulele, and let's get into this. So we'll start with the A section, the intro. This makes up the first eight measures of the piece, and it's fairly straightforward. There's not a huge amount for the left hand to do. Um, so I think we'll be bold here. We'll look at four measures together before slowing things down and playing them through together. So if I play those first four measures for you, they should sound like this. So you can see the left hand isn't doing a great deal there. So if we go back to the first measure, measure one, and these four measures that we're playing, it's the same rhythm all the way through. We're just playing these continuous eighth notes. So we're just playing one, two, three, four, five, six for all these measures. So what we're gonna do to start with is hold the C chord, a high up version of the C chord with the A string seventh and the E string eighth. And once we've held that, that's the left hand done now for these first two measures, we just pick the notes of that chord or the strings of that chord. Okay, so the first three notes um, of measure one, we're just gonna play the open C, followed by the open G, followed by the E string. Okay. And then the second half of this measure, we're just gonna play the A string, E string, G string. And then put them together. And then measure two is identical. We just play that same thing again, so dead easy. OK. 
okay then into measure three we're going to turn this into a kind of standard first position version of the c chord but we don't have to rush and throw our hand down there to get to that point at the start of measure three here because if you look at the tab below me there you can see we don't actually need that note until halfway through this measure the first three notes of measure three are just open strings so we'll leave this on for the first beat of measure three as we play that open c note we'll leave that on but then we'll take it off now because we're going to play the open e so i'll probably just take the second finger off play the open e then as we play the open g take the first finger off and be bringing the hand down ready for beat four to land the third finger on the a string of the third fret to pick that note on beat four then finish off this measure with just the open G and then the open E. Okay, so if I play measure two into measure three to show that kind of delayed transition of the C chord change, we would have... And it just lets everything ring and sustain for as long as possible. So once we've played measure three, we go into measure four and just play that exact same picking pattern that we've just played, but we're now gonna drop it down to a C7 chord. But once again, we haven't got a rush to do that and throw that finger down at the start of measure four, because again, we don't need it until halfway through this measure. So I'll leave that on as we're playing the first part of measure four, which is just the open C, open E. As I'm playing the open G now on beat three, I'll probably think about moving that finger down so it's ready on B4 to play the A string at the first and then open G then open E nice so those four measures once again for real so let's have a go at playing that a little bit slower now through together Four, five, six. So on to the next four measures now, they should sound like this. So measure five, we're holding this F chord, but if we think about kind of continuing from measure four, again, I wouldn't be rushing to throw that full F chord on at the start of measure five. We'll just build it up note by note as we need it. So if we hold our C7 chord, because that's where we were at the end of measure four, when we get into measure five, we're gonna start with this open C, and then we're gonna play the E string at the first. So now we'll bring this finger over. As we're playing that C note, probably be bringing that finger over to the E string so it's ready to play at the first fret on beat two. And then on beat three, we'll add the second finger on just now, just when we need it, onto the G string at the second. And then we'll add the fourth finger again, just as we need it on beat four now to the A string at the third fret. So now at this point, we're holding our full F chord, but we've just built it up note by note as we need it. Then we finish off this measure just with the G string and then the E string but we're holding the notes we need as part of that chord now already. So I'll play measure four into measure five. So again, you can see that kind of building up of the chord. So measure four. Nice. Then into measure six, we're gonna turn this into an F diminished over C, which normally we would probably hold like this but so everything can kind of ring and sustain. It's a little bit awkward, but I think it makes sense to leave the first finger on the E string at the first fret, and then these two fingers just kind of shuffle down to the fret below. So the second finger's on the, se on the first fret, and the pinky now is on the second fret. And that is a little bit awkward. You can see those fingers are kind of twisted, um, but it's only for a very short time, and I think it just makes sense to let everything ring and sustain. So we're holding our F chord at the end of measure five. So measure six, we just play the open C. Then we play the E string at the first. Now we need the G string at the first. So this is the point now beat three, where I just slide those two fingers down, keeping the first finger on. And then we pick the G string, 
which is now at the first fret, then the A string, which is now at the second fret, and then we play the G string again, followed by the E string. So if I play measures five and six again for you there, they should sound like this. And you can see, although it's awkward, it's actually an easier change than there but you get the idea and you hear that change if we do it that way it kind of cuts the notes and we lose that ringing sound so although a little bit awkward I think try that method where you just slide those fingers down so then into measure seven we're now going back to a normal C chord um, so from this point here this kind of awkward F diminished over C what we'll do is beat one of measure seven is just the open C so I'll probably take this chord off as we play that open C but leave the pinky on there on the A string at the second. So we play the open C, then the open G, sorry, the open E, then the open G. But now we want to turn this into a C chord, so we'll just move that fourth thing up a fret to the third as we're ready to play it on B4, then the open G, then the open C. Okay, so that measure six into measure seven. And then into measure eight, we just play that kind of same picking pattern again up to beat four, but then we stop on beat four and let that ring over beats five and six. So we're just gonna play for measure eight, C, E, G, then this A string of the third. That's beat four. And I'll say let that ring to the end of that measure. So those measures five through to eight, once again, we would have Probably in that measure eight, just kind of slow things down a little bit, a little bit rubato in there, just to kind of mark the end of that section before moving into the main kind of melody section, um, which we'll look at next. Okay, so let's have a go at playing measures five through to eight together now. Four, five, six. On to the B section now, theme one. There's a lot more going on in these measures now compared to the intro, so I think we'll go back to our standard kind of two measures at a time before stopping and playing them through together. So measures nine and 10 should sound like this. Okay, so measure nine is just a simple rhythm like the intro of all eighth notes, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're holding the C chord at the end of the previous measure, measure eight, we're playing it with the pinky, so that's where we're starting here in measure nine. Beat one is just the full chord, all four strings together, making sure you pick out that C note at the top there, the A string at the third, make sure that comes out nice and loud. That's the melody note, which then rings over this measure. The next notes that we play now, all these single note picks are just harmony. So pick these a little bit quieter now. So we'll have the E string open, G string open, A string at the third, G string open, E string open, but all just a little bit quieter. Okay, and then on to measure 10, this is where we have this kind of slightly tricky little rhythmic change here at the end of this measure. Instead of our standard one, two, three, four, five, six, we've got a little cheeky 16th note thrown in there between measures, five, sorry, beats five and six. So what we have when we play it is one, two, three, four, five, and six. It's quite quick and it sounds hard when you play it, but that rhythm isn't too bad if you think about just that rhythm of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Think about it, what we're playing it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if we apply that to what we're actually playing, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. It's harder when you're trying to wrap your fingers around the actual notes, but just think about that rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
once more with the actual notes a lot slower. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So that last little bit there of four, five, and six. Okay, so it is tricky, um, but maybe just keep practicing that measure again and again. Maybe even go into that first note of measure 11, just to kind of keep that rhythm going and practice that change into the next measure. Okay, so in terms of what we're actually playing there for that measure 10, what we're gonna do is go into this A minor six chord. So we've been holding the C chord at the end of measure nine. We'll probably take that pinky off now at the end of measure nine and go into measure 10. We'll drop the second finger onto the E string at the second play that with the A string open, so a little double stop there. That's on B1. Then we open C. Now we'll add the A string second on with the first finger. Pick that on B3. Then we're gonna to go to the A string second, so we'll put the third finger on now for that, and we'll pick that a bit louder because this is our melody note now. In fact, since that first beat of measure nine, that melody note on the first beat of measure nine, this is now the next melody note. So everything up to this point has been played a little bit quieter. So there's A string at the second, pick that a little bit louder. Then the E string on beat five, now we have this quick 16th note on the and after B5, where we add the pinky onto the A string third again, that's melody, so a little bit louder. And then we finish off with a little quiet hit of that open C. So there's two measures again, quite slowly. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Whoa, it's me again. You weren't expecting that, were you? So I went back and recorded this little bit after I'd done the rest of the lesson, just because I wanted to mention one more thing about this measure 10. So one of the things that makes the rhythm quite tricky is the fact that the note that we're playing on the and after beat five is actually a melody note. So in all the other measures, the melody notes always fall on the beat. And that's more kind of standard, that's a kind of easier thing to grasp from a rhythmic point of view. But in this measure though, and similar ones like it later in the piece, we play a melody note on beat four, but then the next note on beat five is actually just a little filler note, and the next melody note is delayed until the and after beat five, and that's what makes it a little bit tricky. We expect that melody on beat five, but it isn't, it's delayed that little bit. So this is called syncopation, when the melody falls off the beat, and it can be quite a difficult thing to grasp from a rhythmic point of view. Now you might be fine with this idea of syncopation, and if you are, that's fantastic, but if you're like me, and you can sometimes struggle with rhythms like this, then it's fine just to stop at this point and just practice this until you've got it down. Now, if you have access to the on-screen tab viewer, I would definitely recommend setting that to about two-thirds speed, and then loop just this measure 10 and just play it again and again, just listen to it over and over, then play along with it, and I'm sure you'll have this down in no time. Okay, so now let's play those two measures through together. Four, five, six. On to measures 11 and 12, these are rhythmically just the same as measures 9 and 10 that we just looked at. So we're playing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then measure 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We've got that little cheeky bit at the end there of measure 12, but just like in measure 10. So measure 11 and 12 should sound like this. Okay, so measure 11 is this C chord, um, another version of a C chord higher up the neck where we have the A string at the seventh fret. The rest of the strings are open. Beat one, we pick that A string seventh with the open G. And then just play all open strings now, a little bit quieter because that melody note on beat one, that's the only melody note in this measure. So that rings out over the next note, which is the C string open, then the E string open, then back to the G string, then C string, then E string. So just that measure. Nice. 
place. Then leave that held as we go into measure 12, we'll add the first finger onto the C string at the um, fifth, pick that on beat one, but a bit quieter because it's still just harmony. Then the G string open on beat two. Now for beat three, we need the E string at the seventh, so we'll use a third finger and add that on now, but keeping the other fingers on that we're holding. So pick that on beat three. And then on beat four, we hit this melody note now, so a little bit louder on beat four, we hit this A string at the seventh. And then on beat five, back to the E string seventh. And then shortly after the 16th note now, we're gonna drop the A string down to the fifth fret. So leave the other two fingers on, the first and the third. Pinky comes off, second finger takes that A string at the fifth. Then we pick that on the and after beat five. And then finish off with the open G on beat six. So just that measure 12. And that was that tricky rhythm at the end. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So again, just practice that if you need to, to get that rhythm embedded. So let's have a go at playing measures 11 and 12 through together now. Four, five, six. On to measures 13 and 14 now, you'll be pleased to know that all those tricky rhythms are done for a little bit. They come back soon, so don't get too excited. But for these two measures at least, it's just all eighth notes, so nice and straightforward. And in fact, once we're in position on beat one, that's the left hand done for both of these measures, we're just picking the notes of this chord, okay? So when we're finishing off measure 12, we're holding this G13 shape, so at the end of measure 12, just bring the hand down, first finger will take the G string at the second fret, and then the third finger will drop onto the A string at the third fret. Okay, and then on beat one, we'll play all four strings together. In fact, I'll play these two measures for you now first. So we'll have... Brilliant. So measure one is just this A minor chord on beat one followed by the open E, then the G string, then the A string, back to the G string, then the E string. So just picking all those notes a little bit quieter. That first beat, beat one, pick out that C note there, the A string nice and loud, then the rest of it a little bit quieter. Okay, then the next measure is basically the same again, but without the full chord hit on beat one. So second, next measure, measure 14, we just play the C string open, E string open, G string, and then this next note on beat four is melody, so a little bit louder. So pick that out a bit louder there, then the G string, then the E string open. Okay, um, so let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Four, five, six. So on to measures 15 and 16 now, they should sound like this. Yes, they are as naughty as they look. Um, these are a tricky couple of measures, unfortunately. So rhythmically and technically, there's some challenge going on here, but we'll go slow, we'll break them down. Um, I'm sure with a bit of practice, we'll be fine with these. So measure 15 is starting on this D minor seven chord, and rhythmically, it's not too bad until the end, we've got this little 16th note pull off at the end. So the rhythm for this measure is one, two, three, four, five, six, and. Okay, so we're playing this D minor seven chord, which is just a first finger bar across the fifth fret. And then we're gonna play all four strings together, picking out that A string as the melody note to make sure that comes out nice and clear. Then we're just gonna pick the notes of this chord. So we're gonna play the C string, followed by the E string, and then on beat four, the G string, and then the E string again. And then on beat six, we're gonna play the A string at the seventh. So the third finger will take that, but then straight after, we're gonna pull off for the and after beat six onto the fifth fret of our bar. So that measure. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, and. So then into measure 16, we're going to have. No, we're not. We're going to have this. Okay. So we're starting on this G7 suspended four chord. The rhythm for this measure is one, two, and three four, five, and six. Okay, so we'll break that down a bit more in a second. Um, the first thing to mention though is this change from the end of measure 15 into this G7 suspended four chord is quite tricky because it's all quite quick when this happens. So at the end of measure 15, we've done this pull off and then we need to be straight into this chord ready for that beat one of measure 16. That is quite a hard change because we need to leave the bar on long enough to receive the pull off onto the fifth fret, but then quickly be in this position for beat one there of measure 16. So I'd probably just practice that change just like that. First finger bar on, pull off, and then straight into there. First finger on the C string of the fifth, pinky on the E string at the eighth. Okay. Once you're happy with that change, we'll go through this measure. Probably look at measure 16 in two halves to try and get that rhythm kind of embedded into your head. But just think about that rhythm without the kind of notes and the melody. Just ignore the melody for now and just think about that rhythm. One, two, and three, four, five, and six. Okay. One, two, and three, four, five, and six. Duh. Da, 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 da. Just think of that in your head and then that makes it easier to apply it to the actual notes once you've learned them. Okay, so if we look at the first half of this measure 16, we're starting on that G7 suspended four chord, G string open, C string and E string. So all three strings together, that's beat one. Then on beat two, C string at the fifth, and then straight after on the and after beat two, dropping this E string down to the seventh fret. So pinky comes off, third finger takes that E string seventh behind, first finger just stays on. And then we play that note and that's melody. So a little bit louder on the and after beat two. And then on beat three, a little quieter tap of the open G. So just that first half of measure 16. A bit slower. With the rhythm one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay, then if we take that into the next half of this measure, we're gonna take the third finger off, drop this first finger onto a kind of half bar across just the middle two strings. So it's just the E string and the C string at the fifth fret. Doesn't matter what happens to the A string with that bar, we're not playing that one. So beat four is just this double stop of E and C fifth fret. And this is kind of the same rhythm as that first half of the measure. So we just played one, two, and three. Now we're playing four, five, and six. Okay, so beat one, sorry, beat four is that double stop, beat five, open G. Then I'm going to go back to this E string 7th, so third finger will go back onto where it was, E string 7th, pick that on the and after B5, and play that louder because that's melody, and then finish off with the C string 5th on beat 6. So the second half of that measure 16. So the whole measure together, or the two halves of the, that measure, the first half, then the second half, once again, and then put it all together. Nice. Okay, so let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Four five, six.
So on to measure 17 and 18 now, they should sound like this. Okay, so as you can hear there, all eighth notes, few, a nice easy couple of measures rhythmically, that makes a nice change. So for measure 17, we're gonna be on this C chord um, in first position, but we'll use the first finger that because we've brought these fingers down from here. So the closest finger to that position is the first finger. So we'll just to make the transition easy, just use the first finger for this version of the C chord. So all four strings together. Like always, that top note, the A string being played louder, that's our melody note ringing over this measure. And then we just keep that held and we play the notes of this chord. So on B2, E string open, then G string open, then the A string, but a bit quieter, then the G string, then back to the E string. So just that measure. Okay, then into measure 18, we just keep that held still with the left hand, we carry on picking these notes. So beat one of measure 18 is C open, then E open, then G open. But now we wanna come up to the A string seventh, so we'll just use the pinky for that, stretch it up and put the pinky on, for beat four, when we pick that, that's a melody note, so pick that a little bit louder. And then a couple of quiet notes to finish off. G string open on beat five, E string on six. Okay, so that second measure there, measure 18. And then with measure 17. And I'd probably, as I'm playing this and performing it, start building the volume here, a little crescendo as we come up through 18 into measure 19, which we'll look at next, um, just as some dynamics, just to kind of enhance our performance. Okay, so let's have a go at playing measure 17 and 18 through together now. Four, five, six. On to measures 19 and 20 now, they should sound like this. Yeah, it gets hard again. Um, <laughs> these are probably as tricky actually as those other two measures, measures 15 and 16 we looked at. I said they were the trickiest measures. These are probably on a par with those two measures. Rhythmically though, they're the same. Um, that kind of tricky rhythm that we're doing, it's identical to those other two measures. So we're playing for measure 19, one, two, three, four, five, six, and, and then measure 20, one, two, and three, four, five, and six. So hopefully if you've got that rhythm kind of embedded from those previous two tricky measures, this should be a little bit easier. Again, technically with the left hand, it is a little bit tricky with some tricky changes. Uh, but again, let's go through it slowly. I'm sure we'll be fine with it. So at the end of measure 18, we were just holding this version of a C chord with our pinky on the A string at the seventh. All we're gonna do now for beat one of measure 19, we're gonna add the first finger to the E string at the fourth and play the A string, the E string with the open C. So three strings together. And probably play them quite loud. I mentioned at the end of the previous measure, measure 18, we were kind of building the volume there, a bit of a crescendo into this section. So I've probably hit that chord quite loud for a bit of drama. And then filler notes after that, so a little bit quieter, we'll play that E string at the fourth. And then we want the G string fifth, so keeping those two fingers on, the second finger will loop over and take that G string at the fifth. And then back to the A string seventh on beat four. Back to that G string on beat five. And then we have this six and, and we'll do a pull off here. So what we're gonna do is probably take this chord off as we put the third finger onto the A string fifth. So that the first finger's ready after we've picked it to quickly receive that pull off onto the A string third. So that measure quite slowly. Everything off to do that pull off on its own there. Try that again. Okay, and then straight into measure 20, we're gonna move that first finger just down one fret to the second, and then play that with the open E. So that's beat one of measure 20. So if I play measure 19 into that beat one of measure 20, okay, 
And now in measure 20, we have this one, two, and three, four, five, and six rhythm. So one, two, and three, four, five, and six. It is quite tricky. Again, this one took me a while to wrap my fingers around. So beat one was that double stop. Beat two, C string open. Straight after that, on the and after beat two, take this finger off so we can play the A string open, followed by the E string open. So just that first half of that measure, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay, then we're gonna jump up to the seventh fret on the A string for beat four, we'll play it with the second finger. Um, so just pick that single note on beat four, quite loud because it's melody. And then beat five, open C. Then the and after beat five, coming up to the ninth fret on the A string, so use the pinky for that. Second finger can come off now, we just play that single note. And then beat six, open E. So just the second half of that measure, four, five, and six, we would have four, five, and six. That was a bit messy. Four, five, and six. A bit slower. Four, five, and six. And then with the first half of that measure, It is tricky, again, just keep practicing it, play it slowly, count it in your head, play it with the um, play along track slowed right down, just keep doing it till those rhythms are embedded in your head. And then when you get it, it's actually really fun to play. Uh, once these measures are flowing and they're playing smoothly, this sounds really good and it's actually it's really enjoyable to play these two. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Four, five, six. So on two measures 21 and 22, they should sound like this. So rhythmically, we're back to all eighth notes, so not too much to worry about there rhythmically. In terms of the left hand, at the end of measure 20, we had played this um, ninth fret on the A string with the pinky. So this is where we are at the end of measure 20. Into 21, we want to turn this into this F sharp minor seven flat five chord. So the pinky is just going to come down two frets to the seventh fret. And then the rest of the fingers are going to put this chord on. So we're going to have second finger, E string fifth, and then third finger on the C string sixth, and then the first finger on the G string fifth. So that chord there. Okay. And then all four strings together on beat one, picking out that A string louder for the melody note as usual. Then we keep that held, let it all ring as we just pick the notes off this chord. So on beat two, with the C string, then the E string, then the G string, back to the E string, back to the C string. Okay, so just that measure, all eighth notes. Nice. And then into measure 22, it's quite straightforward for the left hand because all we're going to do, move that pinky down one fret, <clears throat> so it's on the sixth fret, the rest of the fingers just stay where they are, and then we play the A, the E, and the C strings together, but again, picking out that A string a little bit louder. And then we're going to play C string, E string, G string, E string. But now we're going to go back to the G string, but move the finger down to the fourth fret. So the rest of the chord will stay on, but the first finger will just drop to the fourth fret. And then that's melody, so we'll pick that a little bit louder. Emphasize that on beat six. So just that measure 22 on its own. Size that note. So with measure 21, nice. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Four, five, six. So 
On two measures 23 and 24, they should sound like this. Okay, so at the end of measure 22, we were playing this chord here. Um, so if you get that shape held, so we can look at the transition into this measure 23. We were on this B7 flat 9 chord. We'd move the first finger down to the fourth fret to pick that melody note on beat six. So the first part of measure 23, we just want to bring the rest of that chord down one fret so that we're playing now this G sharp diminished seven chord. Okay, so from here, just moving those other fingers, keeping the fourth, sorry, the first finger on the fourth fret, just move the rest down to there. And then beat one, this is all eighth notes, so we're just playing those three strings together, the A, the E, and the C. And then like before, just picking the strings around this chord. So C string, then E string, then G string, then E string. But then similar to the last measure, this beat six now is a melody note once again, but we're gonna play it on the G string. So that first finger, it's a bit awkward, it's just gonna stretch up, it's a bit of a squeeze to get both those fingers on, but it's just for this one note. So you just move the first finger up while the rest of the chord stays where it is, and just pick that G string at the fifth fret. Okay, so that measure once again. Brill. And then it's quick, because then into measure 24, we just bring it back down to the fourth fret where it was. So it was just up to the fifth fret for that single note at the end of measure 23. 24, back to there. But now we want that G string at the fourth fret as our melody note. So we're gonna do an up strum here. It's important that we come up the string sort of backwards so that we hit that note there. That's what we wanna hear um, on that beat one of measure 24. So if I play measure 23 into just that first kind of chord of measure 24, we would have So we get those two melody notes there. Beat 6 of measure 23, beat 1 of measure 24. So that's beat one of measure 24. On to beat two, we're gonna play the A string at the fifth, which we're holding as part of this chord. So this chord stays on as we play that on beat two. But then on beat three, we're gonna move the pinky up to the seventh fret, so this chord can come off now as we move the pinky up to the seventh and pick that on beat three. So that's the first half of that measure. And then on to beat four, we're gonna move the pinky up one more fret to the eighth fret, and then build up this G sharp diminished seven chord, different version of it, where we'll have the E string at the seventh with the second finger, C string at the eighth with the third finger. So a bit like a sort of G seven chord shape, but up at the eighth fret, okay. So pick those three strings together that we're fretting, the A, the E, and the C on beat four and then leave these two fingers on as we drop the A string down to the fifth fret. So pinky comes off, first finger will take that A string at the fifth, but these two are staying on. Pick that single note on beat five, and then on beat six, we'll go into the E string seventh, which we're holding here still from this shape. Okay, a little bit of movement in that section, a little bit tricky, but get a bit of practice, we'll see that right. So those two measures once again, So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Four, five, six. On two measures 25 and 26, they should sound like this. So measure 25, we're starting on this A minor chord, but again, if we think about transitions at the end of the previous measure, measure 24, we were holding this shape here, and we had just played the E string 
at the seventh. So to get down to this A minor chord for beat one of measure 25, I would probably take these two fingers off, the first and the third finger, keep the second finger on though and kind of slide it down as we bring these fingers round ready to land on this A minor chord. So if I play the last three notes of measure 24 into this A minor chord, I would play Okay, once again, a bit slower. Okay, that slide sound of the seventh fret sliding down, you don't need that. Um, it's not very classical sounding, um, but I quite like it. It kind of ties those measures together quite nicely, keeps that kind of smooth flow going. Okay, but either way, that beat one on measure 25, full A minor chord, all four strings picking out that A string that little bit louder because again, that's our melody note. So for the rest of the measure, it's all eighth notes. We're just picking the notes of this chord. Um, a little bit softer now, this is harmony. We're only playing that melody note on beat one. The rest of this now a little bit quieter. So beat two is the E string open, then the G string, then the A string, back to the G, and then the E string on beat six. Then into measure 26, we're now playing the rhythm one, two, three, four, five, and six. So a little tricky one, but familiar. We've seen it before. It's like some of the previous measures we've looked at. So hopefully this rhythm now is kind of ingrained in your brain. So when we play this first beat of measure 26, this open A string, we'll take the A minor chord off. And as we play that open A, just be moving your hand up a little bit, ready to take the C string at the sixth fret. And then pick that on beat two. And then beat three is the E string at the fifth, which we'll take with the first finger. And then the second half of this measure, we have this four, five, and six. That's what we're going for. So what that will be is on beat four, A string seventh with the pinky. Pick that single note. Then on beat five to the C string. Then the and after beat five, we want the A string at the fifth. So pinky will come off and then the first finger will flatten down so it bars across the A string fifth, but it's still fretting the E string fifth as well. So a little half bar across both strings there. So we'll pick that A string on the end after beat five, and that's melody, so a little bit louder, and then finish off on beat six with a little quiet E string fifth. Okay, so just that second half of that measure the first half of the measure okay and then both measures together nice so let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now four five six On two measures 27 and 28, they should sound like this. Okay, so a little bit of movement going on there. That measure 28 is a little bit tricky with the movement, but it's not too bad. Um, so we'll start with measure 27, and that is this G5 chord, um, which we're holding like that. So all four strings together, and like most of these measures, picking out that A string nice and loud as our melody note on beat one. Okay, so that's beat one, that A string coming through loud and clear. Beat two then, we're gonna pick the E string. And now on beat three, we want the G string fourth fret. So we'll use the third finger, loop that over and pick that on beat three. Then on beat four, we're gonna hit that A string at the fifth. And then we have this little five and six section at the end, which is just picking the notes of this chord, which is gonna play the G, the C, and the E. Five and six. Okay, so with the previous beat, four, five, and six. Okay, with the first half of the measure, Then into measure 28, we're gonna take all these fingers off here, but leave the first finger on. 
and then just move that down a fret so it's at the first fret. So we've now got this A7 chord. So beat one, all four strings together, picking out that A string again, nice and loud. In fact, all the notes in measure 28, these are all now melody notes um, on the A string, well, until the last one on the E string, um, but they're all melody, so we're gonna pick them all that little bit louder. So beat one, that full A7 chord. Beat two, Pinky's gonna go on to the A string at the fourth and pick that single note. Then it's gonna move up to the seventh, so slide that pinky up to the seventh for beat three. And then for beat four, move it again. It's gonna shift again up to the 10th fret now, and it's gonna play a double stop with the E string ninth fret. Third finger will take that. So play that double stop on beat four. Then leave that third finger on, take the pinky off as the first finger then goes on to the A string seventh. Pick that note and then finish off on beat six with this E string at the ninth, which we're holding here with the third finger. So just that measure, all eighth notes. Brill. And then with measure 27. Smash in. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Four, five, six. So on two measures 29 and 30, they should sound like this. Okay, so measure 29 is back to this G5 chord, so we'll play that full chord on beat one out the A string a bit louder as usual. Then the E string third on beat two. Then for beat three, this third finger goes over onto the G string fourth. This is very similar to measure 27. So pick that on beat three. Then back to the A string, back to the G string, then E string to finish off that measure. Then into measure 30, we're holding this D7 chord of A string second, C string open, and E string second. We play those three strings together on beat one. And then on beat two, we hit the open A string, a little bit louder because that's melody. And then on beat three, we hit the A string second, so the third finger will go on to take that. And again, that's melody, so we'll pick that a bit louder. So the first half of that measure, quite straightforward. The second half of this measure, not quite straightforward, quite the opposite, because we have this tricky little hammer-on pull-off, which technically isn't too bad if you're okay with hammer-ons and pull-offs. It's more rhythmically a bit challenging because it happens quite quick and we want to kind of keep the rhythm going and not break that kind of eighth note rhythm that we've got. So on beat four, what we're going to do, we're going to hit that double stop of A string and E string second that we're holding already. And then very quickly, we're going to hammer with the pinky onto the third fret A string, but then pull it off again. And then when we pull it off, from a rhythmic point of view, when we pull it off onto the second fret, we're then on the and between beats four and five. So this whole hammer on pull off happens kind of within half a beat between those two beats. But I won't worry too much about that because that's all too quick to try and count. I would just learn to kind of play this by feel so we keep that rhythm going. So after we've done that little hammer on pull off on beat five, we'll hit the A string second. And then on beat six, we'll hit the A string open. So the whole measure. Try that again. Okay, so a good way to practice this is to think about doing it without the hammer on pull off. So on beat four, instead of playing that just play a string third with e string second so pinky goes on and just play that double stop on beat four and everything else is the same so keep it all eighth notes that's essentially what that measure is but we're adding that little hammer on pull off frill just to add something there at the end of that section so without the hammer on pull off But then with it. Okay, so I would probably just practice that again and again, alternate between the two without the pull-off and then with the pull-off, just to kind of try and 
practice that rhythm and keep that rhythm going. So if I show you what I mean by that, I'll play it without the hammer on pull off, and then the second time I'll add the hammer on pull off. So you can hear there, either way, with or without, that kind of eighth note rhythm is still going and still flowing. So another thing you could do with that measure is, again, if you have access to the on-screen tab viewer, you could um, slow things down just a touch, not too much, because if you go too slow, it's difficult then to get that rhythm right when you're playing at tempo. So slow it down to maybe 80%-ish, and then just practice playing that measure again and again until you get that rhythm flowing and get it sounding good. Okay, so there's two measures once again. So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Four, five, six. Okay, so measures 31 and 32 should sound like this. Okay, so measure 31 is just this standard G chord, um, but we'll not bother with the A string yet. So just the C string and the E string being fretted with the open G, play those three strings together on beat one. And then we're just gonna pick the notes of this chord for the rest of these two measures. So beat two is the C string, then the E string, then we'll add the second finger on now to complete this G chord and play that A string at the second on beat four, then back down to the E, then the C, then into measure 32, we'll play the E string, then the C, back to the E, and then the A on B4. Then the last two notes um, on measure 32 is just two taps of this G string open. And they're both melody, so we'll play those a little bit louder. They're gonna lead us into this next section, theme two, which we'll look at in the part two lesson. So once again, those two measures, So let's have a go at playing those two measures through together now. Four, five, six. All right, guys, so first off, I wanna give you a big round of applause because you're now halfway done with learning this tune. Now, if you wanna learn the rest of the song, Stephen's gonna be teaching that in our part two lesson, which is gonna be available at this link right here, or you can go to the site, rockclass101.com, do a search for the song. Now, also on the page are the tabs that you can print off, keep for your records, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play, you can watch that tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed learning the first half of this tune, and we'll catch you in the part two lesson. Take care.